Welcome to OJ Health Radio. I'm your host, Ollie Matthews, a health coach, functional medicine healthcare provider, nutrition therapist, and elite personal trainer who has worked with clients all over the world, from high achieving entrepreneurs, busy professionals, and world champion athletes. We're going to dive into the depths of health to find out how you will be able to reach your peak performance and truly become the revitalizer that you deserve to be. Covering topics around all things health, from the mind and body to lifestyle optimization and movement, along with getting elite business experts on to talk through your business health at the same time. We really do have all areas covered to help you succeed once and for all. No excuses necessary. It's time to become a revitalizer. Remember what we always say, your body is your business. And without a sustainable body, you haven't got a sustainable or scalable business. So get strapped in, get ready to take your body, your mindset, relationships and business to the next level. Hey, welcome back once again. Now, I wanted to go over a bit more about myself, who I am, because I noticed that I talk about a lot of the things that I do, that I work on with clients, and I don't really say why I do these certain things. And one of the big things which has had a massive, massive impact on myself is my own journey with ADHD, with autism and anxiety over the years at differing levels at certain times. Now, I actually wasn't diagnosed until a few years back when I mean, I knew that growing up that something was going on where I was kind of different, although in the circles that I run in with so many entrepreneurs that I see so many symptoms of ADHD or neurodiversity, or uh, when we look at people being on a spectrum of autism, and we hear so much about anxiety nowadays that I wasn't the lone one of these. But when I was growing up, there were so many things that I noticed myself that were personally different about me and, and a lot of my friends and things like just absolutely hating loud noises. I remember it took, like I went to one disco and hated it. Ironically, then I went and started DJing and used to DJ out in clubs, but I never used to like the loud noises. I never used to actually like going to the clubs unless I was the one in control of the music. Uh, I would get these weird like obsessions with creating collections that I would have to get all certain episodes or issues or editions of magazines and DVDs or video, video cassettes, CDs, even things like making sure I had like a massive, massive collection of my CDs. And then I would arrange them in different ways where they would be in kind of color going from like, pinks to reds to orange to yellows and blues or artist to artist and all the CDs had to be in those that right order and it was weird that I would then end up remembering where these CDs were someone would say to me like where's Jay-Z blueprint or where's this where, where's the black album and I would say it, it's up there around 10 CDs in on the left second row and I had like five or six rows of DVDs masses of uh, of CDs and it would be there and some of my friends would actually kind of play tricks on me where they would move my CDs around and that would really really piss me off because then I didn't know where they were and the same thing would happen with DVDs I would then know exactly where uh I see my Michael Jordan picture down there like the ultimate Jordan collection was and then when I wanted it and if it wasn't there someone had moved it I'd get super super frustrated even things like just going deep into video games and playing on the PlayStation, I felt like I was in my zone. I couldn't concentrate on most things, and then I would just go deep into something and couldn't hear anything around me. Then I found out that the creativity came out, where I was very artistic. I used to draw. I still like drawing. Things like learning the Rubik's Cube and things just to keep at peace. Making music. I actually went to music college used to write lyrics in my English lessons and poetry and all these sorts of things. But I would kind of be there in a daydream a lot of the times. And that was where, I mean, looking back, it was pretty obvious that there was some level of autism that was going on and I was on the spectrum, but we didn't 
really have that knowledge then to do what we now have is the ASQ questionnaire, the ASQ or AQ10 is is the main one. And then if you get a certain number in there, you then go to the AQ39 or 40. I can't remember the exact number of it. But I, I just scored highly on these tests. And then it came to like the ADHD, you look at all the symptoms. And it, it was pretty obvious, but it takes a while to get these diagnoses. And that that's where it used to get very frustrating for me that why do I not learn things the way other people did? And when I do learn things, why do I dive in so deeply to them? Like I have done with health, with functional medicine, that if I didn't have ADHD, I would not know as much as I know about how the body works, how our hormones work from thyroids to sex hormones, to digestive system, to gut health, to how our brain works. I wouldn't know these things because I wouldn't have dived in so deep. So it's using it as a strength and as a blessing. And I wouldn't have been able to help so many, so many people. Now, one thing happened that really triggered me a lot when I was growing up and it's that my dad died. Now, he was my hero, still is, and he was 47 years old, and you'll have heard the story that how he passed away, that he was on a course, uh, got hit over the head with a volleyball, and that then triggered, uh, used to get migraines down with stress, and it was just a small hit, didn't, didn't, nothing like that, and then the next morning, he went into the hospital with a migraine, and then this migraine turned serious, and he had a stroke. And he passed away at 47 years old. And he was the guy that was constantly working. And I was looking up to is like, this guy can work hard. And he went from not being very well known in, in the industry he was in to like one of the top people in, in the region, getting headhunted to turn holiday parks from nothing to something. He was my hero with that. And that really knocked me, really, really knocked me quite hard. As, as anyone can imagine, I was 15. He was 47 years old. On the Monday morning, he texted me and said, did you get your money? He sent some money in the post for us to use as pocket money. And that was the last text I had from him because he went into hospital and he had a stroke. And I think it was 13 minutes, brain was starved, his oxygen was starved, his brain was starved of oxygen. And the Saturday night, we had to make the decision to turn off his life support machine. So from the Saturday before, he was totally healthy, as we would see. And then the Saturday after, our lives changed. And that flipped in my last year of school. And my symptoms got really, really bad when it came to, I just could not concentrate at all. I remember I was just really, really forgetful. I would go to have my homework in and forget that I had not done my homework. It just would not be something that I would kind of been able to communicate what, what was actually going on. And that's when I used to find that I would eat in order to calm myself down. This is where emotional eating kind of came into the forefront. My nan used to have this, this bowl of sweets or candy, and I would just dive into that. Loads of yogurts, loads of crisps, all these different things. I would just eat literally like I couldn't say no to food, even if I wanted to. I couldn't say no to it. If someone put a temptation in front of me, I would eat. When I was full, I would keep eating because that would calm me down. Little did I know that it was one of the things that was making things worse at the time. But at 15, 16, 17 years old, it really wasn't something that I was aware of. And then I found that as I got older, these, these other traits of really like impulse buying just came into, in, into effect that I would get money in one hand and it would go out the other. I remember my first job, I used to work on a fruit and vegetable and I'd get, I think it was like 22, 23 pounds. And I would walk home from the city center. It was about two, two and a half hours walk home. I would go to secondhand music stores, buy some vinyl, buy some CDs, like two free CDs with, with that money, then get fish and chips on the way home and get some sweets. And I wouldn't have any extra money. Then I'm, I may have my paper round and things like that as well. So there might be some money there, but I wouldn't have the money that actually came in. And as a result, that then led down the road of overspending and having credit cards and getting that into debt, which thankfully is all under control now because I've managed to control these symptoms and learn to use this ADHD as a strength and the autistic being on the spectrum, learn to use that as a strength to really communicate and help others with their with their lives. Now, 
I would just find that the last few years when I've really managed to build a system, and this isn't going to be a pitch video or anything like that, build a system that I had to notice it was definitely this, that I wasn't making this up. So I'd done different tests and went to see some professionals and went to see uh, therapists and things. And we looked into some of the things that were going on. Like I would have like 50 tasks going on and I'd get more and more and more. And then I would get anxious about it because I need to get this done, that done, that done, that done. And if I didn't get them done by the end of the day, I'd be over the anxious about it and I wouldn't be able to sleep. And this just led down a really, really big rabbit hole. And I was working in the corporate world and things became out of my control. So much so when they were out of my control, this isn't even going into the bodybuilding world and the obsessions that that came into it. And I'll go into another video of my emotional eating in the future. And I was going into the corporate world and I was just pushing to get this big career. And I lost that career because of uh, budget cuts and offshoring. So I went back down to where I was and thought, okay, I'll push. And it happened again. And that's when I started having high levels of anxiety and panic attacks back in around nearly a decade ago now, which is crazy to think of what things have happened and where my life has gone and being able to speak internationally and work with the people I work with. Back then I was at the lowest of lows, but I didn't know about that. That was going to be one of the benefits, but I would find certain things would happen, like the anxiety would happen and then my mind would wander when I was reading. So I'd have to read a page about 10 times. Things like uh, anxiety would kick in if I felt that I wasn't good enough. Even though people were saying that you're absolutely awesome at what you do, I'd be cutting people off halfway through their sentences. I'd then go to an event. And as I'm an introvert, INFJ as well, I'd go to an event and then I would need to have time off just to recharge. Or when you're actually there, and you're in the public place, if anyone's got ADHD, maybe you can resonate with this or um, any tendencies of being on the spectrum that you might be sitting at a table, but you can zone in to the conversation like four tables away, and then that's all you can hear. Even though these four or five people around you may be having a conversation, you end up zoning into that table and you just switch in, that's all you hear, there's nothing else you can hear. And things like... I would get so stressed out as well that I would end up getting um, hemiplegic migraines where I would end up that I would start losing vision in my eye. And if I get too stressed now, I get them. If I mismanage my nutrition, I get them. If I have gluten, I get them. Where I start losing vision in, in usually my left eye, I get pins and needles. It's just like strokes. And it used to really worry me and it still does that when they happen, but I now know they're coming and preventative measures can be put into place. First off, don't get stressed in the first place. Don't eat gluten and don't screw up with your nutrition. But I would get these migraines a lot and then they would knock me for six and another two, three days. Other things that would happen, just being forgetful, like getting so many ideas when driving and then I'd get home and they'd just be gone. Or I would just read between the lines and try and see the whole picture when people were telling me certain things and which was a real big blessing because I could kind of read deeper into people, what they actually were energetically doing and are they the real deal? Are they not the real deal? All these sorts of things. And then when it came to the bodybuilding side where I started competing, I was really, really overweight. And as I said, I ate to calm myself down. I ate because I could control what I ate. I ate because of an emotional attachment. I used to eat a lot in the evenings when my dad and myself used to watch football. And all these things were triggering this emotional reaction to food. And then I found the gym. And that became another obsession, not a healthy obsession. I need to add that, not a healthy obsession. I started dropping weight. Great. That was awesome. I started losing a bit of weight. started feeling good. Great. Well, feeling like I was getting confident. Then I decided to compete in bodybuilding back in 2008. And that's where things just really took over. I was obsessed with it, which you need to be 
if you are going to get on a bodybuilding stage and you're going to stand there in fake tan and uh, pose in trunks and you're just going to let everything go, everything hang out. And from there, that was when I became, I got diagnosed with an eating disorder. Uh, I, I was using exercise to control my, my food intake. I was binge eating. I was emotionally eating and I had exercise bulimia. So basically what happened was that if I had a binge eating episode where I just could not stop myself, again, this is where that obsession came in. If I couldn't have a perfect day of nutrition, I'd have a really shit day. It was either 100% or nothing. Well, I wouldn't have one biscuit. I'd have to have the whole packet. And if there were more in there, I would have to have two packets. And there were plenty of times where my mum used to get frustrated at me where you would end up, she would go to get some biscuits and they were all gone. And that just wasn't a healthy place to be. And if I was still doing that, my last show was 2012 where I started to get good control of this stuff. If I was still doing that, my business would not have taken off where it has. I would not have been able to travel the world without taking all my meals with me, counting every single morsel of food. Uh, that would not have been a good thing. And I think that's something which we have to look at when we look at fitness and health. I was fit for a bodybuilding show, but I was not healthy because up here, I was just obsessed. I had so much ADHD, OCD, whatever letters you want to use over this, that I had to get everything right. Then in the off season, I wouldn't put on any weight because I wouldn't eat enough because I was so obsessed with those scales. My sleep was ridiculously bad. I had the doctor prescribe me Viagra in my mid twenties and sleeping pills because I had no sex drive and I couldn't sleep, which was really frustrating. And I had underactive thyroid as well, which all these things have been sorted now, but all these things actually like I had to go through different periods in order to improve them. And one of the biggest things I used to help myself with this, and one of the biggest things that helps my clients with this stuff, and I've worked with many, many people that have said, I've used so many nootropics and I've used all this amount of modafinil and I've had different prescription drugs that have helped a little bit, but then I've needed more. And there's people that have said that, They've had, in fact, one of my clients diagnosed 20 years ago, and it was ADD then, and he said he's had better results with that since he's worked on his nutrition than any of the actual medication that he's been using. And that's pretty powerful. Now, here's what happened with myself. When I dropped weight, I noticed that my ADHD improved. And if I've put on weight, I've always spoken about my journey of being in the health world, but actually adding weight and being out of shape back in 2016 when I got married, when I was working with professional endurance athletes, my ADHD was really bad, really, really bad. And getting into shape just helped me with the way my body works, the way my brain works. And looking into brain health, it makes a lot of difference. But getting active, whether that's the gym, whether that's just moving, all these things help a lot. Building a solid routine absolutely helps. However, one of the things I do still, still have some issues with is when my my routine changes, just a blink of an eye, I have to really, really focus on that. But the biggest thing is managing my blood glucose. So if I eat like crap, ADHD comes back, I then get really, really frustrating to be with, definitely frustrating to be with if you ask my wife, or I might have flipping my temper to a degree. It might have this where for no reason, I just get frustrated at something and get angry. I would never be violent to it, but I'd just be angry and angry at myself. And these are things that if I let my nutrition slide too much, this is not to be 100% perfect, but if I was to eat crap for four or five days and not prioritize my sleep for a day or two and I was tired, Say I just let my blood glucose management go out of whack where I had more carbohydrates than I needed and low protein and not having enough fiber. ADHD levels would just go all over the show. And I think that so many people underestimate the power of getting a good routine 
consistency with their sleep, consistency with their wake up, not relying on caffeine. People underestimate this stuff. People underestimate how much power there is in just getting good protein into your body and consistently getting this protein in. There's all this push towards a plant-based diet, which you can get protein levels in, but it's hard if you've got poor blood glucose management with the amounts of carbohydrates they have. So I see people are actually getting less protein and they're getting higher carbohydrates, really poor blood glucose management, and ADHD symptoms go up. And it's so, so frequent that I speak to someone and they say, I really struggle to control my ADHD, but they're on a plant-based diet. And it's not to say the plant-based diet is necessarily good or bad. We need to manage it the right way. We need to supplement with the right things. And I know definitely that I've tried plant-based diet. I wouldn't try it again because it made my symptoms worse. And that is someone that was eating healthy. Healthy, when I say getting good protein levels in, not someone that says, oh, I'm eating healthy, but eating loads of processed food. Someone that's eating healthy would then do that. Then I'm not going to be doing that again and putting my body through that because I do not want to go through those symptoms of high levels of ADHD. Now, it's not just that. It's not just those this composition of meals and stuff, but it's not just that diet. If you look at the processing of foods, the additives, just on, on any diet, and the toxins we're exposed to, then it makes a lot of difference to the way our brain functions. And I know myself as being this person that still that I really don't like loud noises, even though I've got two beagles and they make a lot of loud noises, especially when like the postman comes and I don't like vacuum. One of the worst things I hate is hearing people eat. If if you hate hearing people eat, then please leave a comment or say something because literally I will tune into someone eating. I will tell people to shut up in the cinema sometimes. And that's not funny. It's really rude. But some people where they've got their popcorn in the cinema, I'll end up just like, shh, shut up, like that sort of thing. Or if my wife finishes, my wife always finishes after me when I eat. I have to leave the table, go and wash the dishes or go go sit on the sofa and watch some TV. I can't sit up there. Like I've tried so much to do that sort of thing. But that's one of the things which I would like to improve on because sometimes you just can't stop but hear people eat. We were on a train the other day. We got stuck. Uh, just Well, we got stuck at Ipswich because there was a train broken down out of all the places to get stuck. Ipswich. Ipswich. But we got stuck in Ipswich. And there was a person next to us rustling his paper, eating some crisps. I was frustrated because we were up late because we were over, well, we were actually three hours delayed, supposed to get in at 8.50 p.m. and got in at 11.50. But then this person wants to open this bag of crisps and bag of sweets next to me. Jeez. So if you suffer from any ADHD-like symptoms, maybe, maybe there's autism going on, you can remember certain things like, I remember dates really, really well. My wife always says that to me, that you remember the date we we met, the date we first messaged, the date we um, had our first date, we, the, the date we made it official, our wedding, all these certain things. Like I'll remember all these certain things that historically guys seem to forget, but I'm absolutely awesome with dates. And if you suffer from any of these ADHD like symptoms, like if you just want to chat, drop me a message and chat. Let's, let's just like literally be ADHD buddies or autism buddies. Or if you suffer from anxiety or anything like that, I'm, I'm just sharing my story as to what has helped me. The biggest, biggest thing that's helped me with managing these so they are my superpowers is my nutrition is my training, is what I actually embody with what I do every single day, with working with people on every single day. So please, 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 if you want to improve these symptoms, do that. Improve your nutrition. Stop saying you're going to do it and do it. You don't need to have all these, all these nootropics and you don't need to have all these medications prescribed to you or not prescribed and then potentially causing more damage but you don't need to get on modafinil or get on like different types of mushrooms and things, all this sort of stuff. Excuse me. You don't need to have that. And lion's mane, all this stuff. You don't need to have that 
if you're doing the other things, you really, really can improve. Now, that might be that 1% extra, but how is that going to impact your health longer term? What about your sleep? If you're not sleeping, you shouldn't be then having to require melatonin. Your body should be doing this. You shouldn't be there wide awake with anxiety when your head hits the pillow. You should be able to help yourself with this stuff. So please, please, please find someone. If it's me, great, like message me, but find someone that can help you support yourself with this stuff. There's information on the internet. There's all this information. Just you can improve ADHD symptoms, autism symptoms. You can improve anxiety. Just talk through it. Ask for help. Find someone around that you can actually chat to. Hopefully this has been helpful. It's been helpful for me because I got to talk about myself, which I don't usually do that much because I've been looking at how to help people. And my wife actually said, people don't know about these certain things that you go through and all this sort of stuff that you have been through, which is why you've developed this knowledge. You haven't just picked up a book and thought, oh, this is cool. You've acted this stuff on yourself, which is why you're so good at it. And thank you for watching, for listening, however you're consuming this content. And hopefully I'll uh, hear from some of you in the future.